Welcome to the Poisoner's Cabinet. I'm Sinead. And I'm Nick. And this is your weekly podcast exploring the lives of the great poisoners, macabre murders and captivating crimes from across the centuries and creating curious cocktails inspired by the tales that we tell. And it's episode 194. Nicely done, 194. Yes, 194. 194, 194. 194, 194. Yes, many, many nines. More one. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, not that many. Uh, what I meant to say was, ah, oh, we're racing through the 90s, right, and okay. I did not, not say that there it, are many right. nines in 194. <laughs> There's one nine. I see them at night. <laughs> How are you, Nick? I'm fine. How are you? I'm, f- I'm mad. I'm all right. Insane. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm fine. I'm not. I'm. I'm unwell for reasons this week. <laughs> Lady related reasons. Lady reasons. <laughs> but I'm feeling a bit better. I'm feeling much better than I was earlier. If we had tried to record this during the day, which because I'm do. a delight. You say you have a, been very cheery. Say very cheery. You've been I'm making me laugh a lot. Infectiously cheery. Yeah, you've been very nice. What's going on? Oh, I'll throw shit at you later. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, you're in fine mood. Mm. Little glass of wine. That's because I got a bucket of wine. <laughs> <laughs> Getting absolutely stuck in with the lovely, lovely wine. Quite right. Wonderful. Any poisonings this week? Oh, probably. But probably. Yeah. Oh, you can't be expected to keep count of these exactly. things. Exactly. No, indeed. I've got far too many things to do. You need to get you a diary. Yes. For your poisonings. Some sort of abacus. On the wall. An abacus. <laughs> flick of the, flick of the beads. Bing, bing, bing. It's good to have a hobby, isn't it? it? Is. <laughs> and we'll also get you one of those fun clay slates that you can carve the words into as well. Won't I live by know. myself, okay? <laughs> you I need to make my own fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, people listening to After Dark will know what that's about as well. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of being delightful and having buckets of wine, mm. I think it is time for us to thank our delicious Patreon subscribers. We probably should. I'm going to talk really slowly <laughs> so you? I can get Pull the, the list. list. Oh, no, I found the list. Oh, yes. <laughs> Did you smoke a big bag of crack? <laughs> big bag of crack. <laughs> big bag of crack. <laughs> no idea what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Something in that wine. <laughs> maybe. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I'm sober. It's like, what the fuck? See, actually, so you don't notice <laughs> because normally we're both pissed at this point. Yes, we've normally had like a cocktail so, down. Yeah, exactly. So this is what I'm normally like. You're just seeing it from a sober point of view. No, you're you're more hyper than normal. <laughs> anyway, mm. thank you to Cherry. Lisa S. To Gina Mook. To Death by TBR. To Lovely. Jackie. To Panda Triss. To Udalale. <laughs> Uda la- I like that Udalale. Oh, golly, what a day. Udalale. Is that a Maui Pamir Prince thing? Excuse me? It's from, um, it's from uh, Robin Hood. Oodle lally, oodle lally, ah, gally, yes, that's, it. Day. that's it. I was thinking. Well, you, I'm assuming. Well, I was, no, I, for some reason I had in my head it was the, you know, the merry go, when they're doing the merry go round in the animated bit of Mary Poppins. They sing a round. Anyway, none of that. It's not, it's not any of that. <laughs> it's their name. And to Katie Brooks. There we go. There we are. <laughs> <laughs> quite, quite the roller coaster oh, we went on with the names go, there. Go up the collar eventually, but you're all marvellous. Have is. some wine. Have some wine, you lovely, sexy, sexy Patreon subscribers. We had fun on Patreon this week. We had quite the wonder that we talked about. That threw you completely. Oh, it did. It yes. Did. yes. That was a great I, little I story. I remembered it. A little theme going of, you know, things that may have happened or may not. I can't give too much away in case anyone hasn't listened to the mm. episode, but it was the... It's the, a good one. The Campton Wonder back in 1660. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not one I actually was, but no, I liked that. You surprised me. If you want to know what the hell we're talking about, please consider joining us on patreon.com forward slash the poisonous cabinet. That's our subscriber channel where you get extra episodes every single week as well as bags of bonus content. Whether you are an arsenic aficionado or a cyanide connoisseur where you get lots of extra, extra things. It's a lovely place, a lovely community and we have book club coming up and Nick has just caned his second glass of wine <laughs> very quickly. You strawpedoed that. No, oh, I'm pleased. <laughs> Splishy, splashy. And it's your episode. Might be your one soon. <laughs> <laughs> Nick has a lie down while I read words and try not to throw up. Very well written episode. So, yeah, I'm sure you'll be fine. It's, we also have a shout out this week. Ooh, hurrah. We have a shout out from wonderful, lovely Jess to Derek. Hello. Her husband, Jess and Derek, just got married. They Yay. have just gotten married. They got married on the 29th of February. They took advantage of the leap day, the leap year. I want to get married. Oh, actually married on the 29th? Actually married, yes. You, you can do it. Yes, you can. I mean, great for anniversary presents. Exactly. I'm going to buy you one for four years now. Brilliant. <laughs> well, they, the way they put it was that they, they love the idea of three years out of four, they can pick whatever they want to have their anniversary. Oh, nice. Like which it. is really nice. They've like been it. together for 16 years. Jess has listened to the show a couple of times now. I think she's on a second row round. But <laughs> Jess wanted to say to Derek to say how happy she is that they are married. Their life is already amazing. They're going to get even more amazing together. 
and she wishes him paste on toast and chocolate vodka. Right. I suspect that they will take meaning from that. Yes, I'm sure, but that yes. sounds horrible. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's two separate things. Oh, not 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 in a blender. Oh, it might be. No, no, no. But do we need that. more details? No, we don't. I feel we don't. I feel we don't. I, you do. You have, have enjoy. Have a lovely time. Congratulations. Well, congr- congratulations on your marriage and on your future anniversaries and all of your chocolate vodka. Well, Nick, are you ready? God no. <laughs> to drink cocktails and talk about poison. I'm a wine. I'm a wine. I'm a wine. <laughs> That's a cocktail. You've mixed it up with grapes and shit. Or we could drink poison and talk about cocktails. Is it wine? Is, is wine. Is it wine? Is it poison <laughs> is it, wine? It could be poison wine. Let's have that. <laughs> Sh- shall we go with the first one? Okay. Shall we see? Let's. Y- you can have more wine Yay. and cocktails. I will sip a cocktail very slowly and watch this unfold. <laughs> <laughs> Ironically, someone was asking us today, going, have there been any really drunk episodes? And I'm like, yes, no, this one. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. No, no, it's fine. Let's go with the first one. Hooray, hooray, Fight hooray. professionalism. I think you'll find. <laughs> it is Nick's story this week, and we can't, we, can't, we can't possibly have a story without a cocktail in hand. As you know, dear listeners, every week we choose a secret ingredient that is inspired by the tale that we tell, and it will flavor a cocktail of the week. Nick, this this week's secret ingredient is... Is some delightful taxes. Tax. tax. Taxes. The taxes. Tax. Ooh, Who that's... doesn't love some tax? Yes. Quite a few people have gone, oh, that reminds me I have to do my tax returns. <laughs> yes. Reminds me. I hate fucking tax returns. It's yes. Really annoying. <laughs> yes, you do a lot of them and then they go wrong. They go horribly, <laughs> horribly wrong. And I can't fix them. So <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> we'll yes. discuss that later. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. You're breaking that to me now about our business. Okay, right. Oh. But taxes. 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 And also, that's, that's quite nicely fitting. for. That's a really weird link that I'm going to make. The Patreon, who was Oodle Lally from mm. Robin Hood, and they had to collect, collect the taxes. They were taxing the poor. Yes. That's why Robin Hood was emerged as a fox. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, he emerged <laughs> as a fox. <laughs> yes. <laughs> From Sherwood Forest. <laughs> exactly. There was no Robin Hood. It was just a fox. Just a fox that everyone <laughs> worshipped. Nice. A sexy, sexy fox. Sex- it was a very sexy very fox. Sexy fox. It was a very sexy fox. There we are. That's my obscure link for the day. Wonderful. With tax, then, mm. as the ingredient, the inspiration, the horror. The horror, indeed. What have you come up with? We are going to have mm-hmm. a death and taxes. Death and taxes. Death and taxes. I, I said I was. I was convinced that you wouldn't be able to find anything that was actually taxes. I was like, death oh, that's and taxes. Weird. Ooh, death and taxes. Well, mm. they go together beautifully. Well, that they do. Is it maybe death or taxes? Entirely unescapable. As is this cocktail. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, good. That bodes well. Ha! <laughs> I'm excited. I think it is high time for us to slink into the poisonous cabinet kitchen and shake up a storm. So we'll see you in a minute. We'll see you in a bit. And we're back. Hello. So, Nick, mm. death and taxes. Death and taxes. Together at last. It's a brown drink. Desperately brown. It is, and very brown, actually. Very brown. I'm, I'm worried. Mm. <laughs> Should I be worried? Mm. I don't know. Brown rarely steers us wrong. This is true. Are you excited for this one? I'm intrigued by this one. Yeah, no, oh, I'm looking forward to it. Actually. Okay. Yeah, so it's... um. I feel it's going to be spirit forward, shall we say. So prepare <laughs> yourself. Right, good. <laughs> I've been throwing up today and have only this. just managed to line my stomach with a small wrap. But, you know, I'm confident in my abilities. <laughs> right. Okay. Let's dive in. Let's give it a go. <laughs> okay. So, death and taxes. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's perfect. Oh, yeah. That's, 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 that's got some... That's got some cojones. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Mm. That's got some kick. That has. That is stuff in it. Uh, <laughs> it has indeed. It's got stuff. I'm frightened. <laughs> it stings the nostrils, Nick, in a good way. I like. I quite like that. I do like it. It's very spirit forward. Yeah, um, very, very much so. I'm trying to work out what's in it, though. Okay, so let's make some guesses. Bourbon? Nope. Oh, wait a minute. Calvados? Nope. Fuck you. Scotch whiskey? Yes. A blended, a blended, a blended, a blendy, blendy. Mm. Okay. Uh, nothing to beat. Nothing to beat. Is there red vermouth in this? There is. Yeah. Okay. It's it's sharp though. There's there's no there's no citrus in this, is there? There is not. No. no. Maraschino. I mean. No. Oh, oh but you're like uh, no. Uh, no, but cherry brandy. No, no. Yeah, yeah. 
Close-ish. Ish. Brandy? No. Cognac? No. Is it a cherry adjacent? An apple? No, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not fruit named. It's um, not fruit named? No. But things sort of, things sort of like brandy, liqueur Benedictine? No. No. <laughs> not chartreuse. No, not chartreuse. Oh, thank God. The Chinor? Nope. The Strago? A Grand Magne. Oh, oh, there's oranges though, isn't it? There's orangey. Orangey, well, fruity. Can... Mm. I said fruity. You Didn't said say... not fruity. You said not fruity. Did I say not fruity? I meant to say fruity. <laughs> right. You can't be blamed for the wrong instructions. No, again. no, no, no. <laughs> no Grand Magne in there. Oh, yes, okay, Grand Magne. Grand Magne. Okay, anything else? One more thing. <laughs> Bitters? Well, that's, yes, that, and another thing. Gin? Yes. Fuck. What? I was guessing. No, gin. Yeah. You're going to die. It's going to fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this this will kill or cure me, to be honest. Pretty much, yes. Yeah, it will dull this the will pain. Kill or cure most things, I think. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, that is uh, spirit forward. I mean, it's potent, but it's, it works. To say the least, it is. I mean, I like it. I yeah, like it. I like it. It's oh, it's nice. The, th- the third sip is yeah, no, lovely. It's, it's, it's very good. It's very, very nice. It's, it's very, very nice. nice. It's a good sipper. sipper. Yes, absolutely. Yes, calm it's, it's, not it's, down it's one. It's not one to start a party with. But you could start a party with this. <laughs> Have one of these and it's going to be a party somewhere. This is true. <laughs> In your mouth. Mm. Lovely. Okay. So that, well, death and taxes. Death Jesus. and taxes. You need a stiff drink to get through both. <laughs> well, quite. So. <laughs> I mean, not, yeah. if you've died, then you don't need a stiff drink. Maybe if you've watched someone die, then yeah. One of these would help. <laughs> Well, that's jolly. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, it doesn't mean that you're upset about it. I'm just like, it's a bit of a shock. <laughs> like, ooh, ooh, I'll this, need a stiff drink would, to would, get yes, over I'll this. Yes, I'll need a stiff drink. Let me mix up a, a, a cocktail <laughs> while I'm here. <laughs> exactly. Don't call the ambulance. <laughs> Give me a drink. I need to steady my nerves what before if, I dial. Yes, exactly. <laughs> what have you got in your drinks cabinet? <laughs> <laughs> what did they have in their drinks cabinet? Now I have full access to it. <laughs> and also taxes. Yeah, they suck. <laughs> Lovely. Well, that's a resounding success. I can only express my joy and excitement for what is going to come next. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, with the death and taxes firmly in hand yes. for the first time, is it time for a story, Nick? Probably. Yes. Yay. Probably. 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 Yes. Tell, tell a dying woman a story. So today, yes, we have the story huh? of William Brody. Uh-huh. Deacon William Brody, no less, oh. to give him his full and fancy title. Uh huh. Now, William is born in 1741. Ooh, going back. Nice. Going back a bit. Now, to a very, very respectable and a very middle-class family in Edinburgh. Oh, nice. Love yes, it. Yes, we're up to Scotland. Both of his grandfathers are lawyers. Mm-hmm. His father, Francis, runs a highly successful cabinet-making business. Love a cabinet. Yeah, absolutely. It caters to the fanciest of Scottish society. Lovely. So, yeah, really, yeah, top of the top there. Yeah, 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 yeah. William is raised to follow in his father's footsteps. He's uh-huh. one of several children. I don't know how many children. I'm not even sure if he's the eldest son, yeah. but he is certainly the one who has shown considerable skill in his mm-hmm. father's craft that he is going to inherit the business. He yeah. is going to inherit everything from his father. So, yeah, he works alongside his dad. And when his father does die in 1780, William inherits the lot. Ooh, nice. He gets... So many cabinets. Yeah, a lot of his father's estate. Now, he has several houses, including a t- uh, quite a fancy townhouse on the Royal Mile. Oh, wow. In Edinburgh. So, yeah, oh, so God. we're talking serious money here. People need cabinets. But people need cabinets. So, yeah, I mean, he's got his father's business, his father's workshop, say... Mm. The, the main house and several other houses, plus £10,000 in the bank. And that's £10,000, 1780. Can I just say that he now sounds very hot? Yeah, I mean, this is <laughs> enough to set you up for several lifetimes, <laughs> really. <laughs> so he is... And yet, what will befall this well, man? Well, indeed, oh, we shall find out. Yeah. In some accounts I've read, William marries and has an undisclosed number of children. (laughs) In other reports, his sister comes to live with him, with her family, in this grand townhouse on the Royal Mile. So we know there is a family of some sorts living in the house. We don't know if it's him and his wife or him and his sister and her family. It's sort of, yeah, a few different people say different things. I'm 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 sensing that the children are not important, The children children are not necessarily important. There were children nearby. Neither is... A wife, if really, in, in the story. Well, so, isn't that cutting of you, Nick? <laughs> the wives don't matter. They don't matter, especially if they don't exist. <laughs> you know, the wives that don't exist need the most support. 
I mean, William is now set as one of the preeminent businessmen of the city. Ah, Not yes. only is he wealthy, but he's actually very skilled as well. He's very good at his job. Mm-hmm. So the who's who of the sort of Edinburghish society. <laughs> the, the Edinburghish Edinburgh, Ed, 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 Edinburgh, sh- sh- <laughs> so they sort of clamour to commission William to create the very latest in furniture fashions very for nice. them. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, he's got a big old waiting list of people wanting stuff Ooh, from this him. Is nice. Not only is he a, a very skilled carpenter with his workshops and his workmen <laughs> as well, um, but he also has a great interest in locksmithing. Oh, um, the okay. latest sort of locksmithing sort of technologies and techniques yeah, and things because yeah. he's making cabinets which have got locks in so he's very interested in what yeah. is the latest the latest thing i suppose you um, had something that's really intricate and really pretty that would yeah, be a, a appeal to exactly so yeah so many of his his cabinets and his his cupboards are fitted with intricate locks that he himself has sort of designed and sort mm. of come up with he swears they are unpickable they are unbreakable these these locks that he has come up with mm. and many many people as well as many businesses start to pay top dollar for what they think is top-notch security mm-hmm. installed by William Brody. This is the man who knows what he's talking about. His hobnobbing with the great and the good of society <laughs> right. sort of introduce him to some really famous names of the day. Okay. I mean, he is supposedly friendly with the poet Robert Burns. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, they're there having a grand old time together. Oh, the nice-ish. painter Henry Rayburn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so they're all there, sort of rubbing shoulders, talking locks, talking cabinets, <laughs> the latest fashions from London and Paris, and, yes. and what have you. The two conversations you can have. What's in fashion, <laughs> and do enjoy a good cabinet. Do enjoy a good cabinet. <laughs> He's just standing while like these artists and poets are speaking in wonderful terms and of great beauty, and he's just going, look, this opens look. and closes. Eh? This eh? is not... Three draws. <laughs> <laughs> Whisper quiet. <laughs> very, very it's fancy. Very fancy. It's very fancy. And <laughs> Did Rayburn paint a, do a painting of an just, idiot just playing a with a cabinet? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> so not only say is he hobnobbing with the great and the good, he is also a member of the Edinburgh Cape Club. Ooh, which is tell me everything well it's it's quite a sort of renowned club that had initially been founded many many years before to support the scottish militia it had been a way to sort of yeah rich and titled people mm. to show their support and give money to the scottish militia okay. it had sort of devolved into a rich drinking club <laughs> by this point don't they all <laughs> yeah. so, but with um, capes with capes exactly they still have the capes it's great um <laughs> really big capes all of all of them all of the members had names were, were given sort of pseudonyms based on sort of knightly titles so they all serve yeah. something oh, really? each member was ser- even though they oh, weren't knights sake. they were either member was ser- or other that's a bit like um, the freemasons though, isn't yeah, it? It's yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's that sort of thing mainly it was like every night in the pub yeah. get pissed <laughs> play stupid pranks on people and then go home <laughs> and sleep it off and do the same thing tomorrow so is it the <laughs> scottish cape so, the Edinburgh Cape Club. The Edinburgh Cape Club. The club was actually, it was disbanded as sort of like early 1800s or so. It's like, no, this is nonsense. What's going on? <laughs> it was actually reformed in the 60s and it's still going. No, <laughs> fair <laughs> so, enough. So, yeah. Absolutely so, fine. Like, that sounds great. Let's that get more great. of that. So, yeah. So, off, off they go again. <laughs> but, yeah, he's one of these. and it, But it only introduces him to more and more people who, are, yeah, of, who have got the money. And the capes. Um, and, um, and they need to store their capes in cupboards. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's cleaning up in there. <laughs> he is absolutely. He, he is cleaning up, indeed. All of these connections help William up the ladder. Mm. And in 1786, he is appointed the Deacon of the Incorporation of Rights. Right. right spelt w-r-i-g-h-t-s right oh, okay, so as okay, in okay. as in shipwright will yes. right so basically he is the the head of the city's guild of craftsmen nice nice so yeah and which gives him the title of deacon so it's not, it's not a religious title <laughs> no it's gonna work but yeah the head of the city's craftsman oh i really. do like a guild exactly so this new role entitles him to a seat on the city council mm-hmm. so he is right at the top of respectable edinburgh society mm-hmm. he is absolutely peak 
middle class. He's not nobility. He's not aristocracy. Yeah, I was going to say he's not uh, king. No, <laughs> but, but he, he was sort of like middle class, sort of yes, um, respectable right yeah, businessman. Yeah, yeah. He is as Poster high up as you're going to get, really. Yeah. But as he sits with his fellow councillors, deciding on great city matters and things like Ooh, that, yes, 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 yes. none of his peers really know the man that they have brought into their midst. Oh, okay. Deacon Brody is a man who hid many secrets <gasps> beneath his respectable <laughs> and refined exterior. Um, Did he have skeletons in his cabinet? Uh, many, <laughs> many skeletons in his cabinet, in many cabinets. In many cabinets. <laughs> so don't look at that. And while he was a welcome guest in the grandest homes in the city, in the fanciest clubs and hotels, he has just a strong reputation. In the seedier side of nice. the city, in the darker streets, the drinking dens, the gambling houses, yeah. that upstanding society men should never seen, be seen. No, no, they should no, never no, be no. seen there. Absolutely never be seen there. Ooh. Now, certainly he wasn't the only rich young man who was wanted to indulge his vices. <laughs> but William, as wealthy as he was, yeah. seemed entirely determined to live as outside of his means as entirely possible. Right. <laughs> How? Well, he keeps two mistresses. Oh, two? He keeps two mistresses. Yeah. He sets them up each in their own home in very nice, respectable areas of Edinburgh. Fair play. They, ha they each have their a regular income from William. Okay. With one of the women, he has two daughters and a son. Ooh. With the other, he has two sons. Oh, and more he pays, kids. Yeah, so he's got five kids. <laughs> right, that we know of. In total. And they are completely unknown to each other. And completely unknown to anyone else in the city, really. So he keeps it a complete secret that he's got these two sort of families. And they never, they never cross paths. That's weird. Um, yeah, well, they I never guess. cross paths. Yeah. They, they never realise about each other's existence until very, very, very much later down the story. Ooh. But yeah, but he is funding these two families. Okay. If that won't drain enough on his resources, William does enjoy a flutter. Yeah, it is a flutter. He, he does enjoy a flutter. Mm. Cock, cock fighting and cards. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't love cock fighting and cards? Who doesn't? <laughs> I, I, cards, yes. Seeing chickens kill each other, mm. no. Not, no. Not, not so much, no. No, they appear to be something of a lifelong indulgence. Really, mm. from when he was quite quite a young man, sort mm. of out on the town. Yeah, cock fighting and cards, they are the way to go. Ugh. And they often got him into trouble with the people you really don't want to be in trouble with. No, no, no. <laughs> if you're gambling above your means, you need to yeah. pay up, sir. I mean, his first close call comes in 1768. Now, he's 27. His father is still very much alive at this point. Yeah. Um, so he's working with his father. He's not had the grand inheritances yet. He's loving off a wage. Mm, mm, now, mm. perfectly... That would have been perfectly acceptable. Yeah. A decent sum of money to live if quite a comfortable life on. were not a if, gambler. If he were not such a gambler, indeed. But the cards got the better of him. And he owes a considerable sum of money to the types of men that you really don't want to owe oh, money to. Oh, dear. He's getting desperate. Threats mm. are being made. He can't go to his parents and ask for money. Why do you want money? Well, I've lost a shitload of cash. <laughs> Down the docks. Down the docks. <laughs> so that would not do at all well. No, um, Not no. if he's expecting to inherit the business and the house and the money and all this sort of thing. Yeah. So yeah, none, he, so there's no way of just going, can I borrow some cash, mm. please, really. So he's getting desperate. Mm -hmm. He likes his kneecaps. <laughs> <laughs> and a thought occurs to him. Mm. And he develops a cunning plan. <laughs> Great. William and his father are installing some new furniture in a bank in the city. Oh my God! They've been yep. They've been commissioned. We'd like some new lovely desks, please. In ah, the, lovely desks. In lovely desks. Not to, a safe. Not a safe. No, just some just lovely, some just some lovely office yeah, furniture and fair. things in in the bank. Now, the bank staff well know of the reputation and the upstandingness mm. of the business <laughs> of the family. They are more than happy to let William and his father Francis free range of the place you come and go do as you need to do measure up install whatever you need to do yes you come and do it absolutely they are left unattended around the bank in various offices and such <laughs> fine no bother at all william takes advantage of this rather lapse security 
and makes a wax impression of one of the bank keys nice. that is hanging just on a hook in one of the offices. Oh, ah, yes. Good. Yep. Top-notch security there. Top-notch security there. The, yeah, the bank key just hanging on the hook there. Mm. Just gets a little block of wax, makes a nice impression of the key. By night, he uses that mould to fashion himself a set of keys mm. for the bank. He breaks in, steals £800. Oh, my God. Just walks out. And walks out. Locks up behind him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one is any the wiser. Do they not uh, have a night watchman or anything? Well, he may, well then they must do, but he manages to Gets evade them, yeah. the, 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 the night watchman and say he's not making any noise. There's no he's smashing no, a glass no, or anything he's just got like the keys. that. So he lets himself in, takes some cash, and off he scarpers. Lovely. Marvellous. He goes, he pays off his debts. The next morning, the bank is an uproar. This money, <laughs> this money is missing. What the hell's going on? How did these people get in? Everything is locked up as tight as yeah. it should be. Not for one minute does anyone suspect. Yeah. The cabinet makers. Yeah. That are, that have been in. They've just been doing their job, going about their business. But the staff of the bank do start questioning them about. Well, how can we improve our security? <laughs> <laughs> what what you what should we? Locks. You know, but exactly, you know about locks. You know about mm. all this stuff. What should we do so this doesn't happen again? Yeah. And of course, William is more than happy oh, yeah. to to give them great detail. So he gets a huge commission nice. out of replacing all the locks in the building <laughs> that he's broken into. <laughs> that he's broken into. So yeah, so he's having a grand old time of it, <laughs> trying not to laugh behind his behind his hand. That's brilliant. Yeah. That is genius. <laughs> so, Love it. So the eight, this eight hundred pounds that would ordinarily I mean this is a huge sum of money. It would have a working family could have lived off that for years. Yeah, yeah. It, this is a huge sum it just of shows money. Shows how much he's in debt. It only just about clears William's debts. Good lord. Now, of course, he could have used this experience as a <laughs> as as a learning sort of a learning up experience. Right. Yeah. He, he got himself out of debt. Get on the straight and narrow. All been good, fantastic. He's got a respectable job. He's got a good family. He could have a fantastic life. But where's the fun in that? Yeah, he's just gotten away with where's robbing eight hundred quid. This is a way to make fuck loads of easy money. Yes. <laughs> no just... more paying my debts in credenzas. Exactly. <laughs> Only a fool is going to give this up. Yeah, great. And so William Brody turns to a life of nighttime crime. <laughs> By day, he is Deacon Brody. Craftsman extraordinaire, mm. maker of exquisite things to the rich and powerful. His charming, cheeky, chappy routine delights his clients, who are mm. only more happy to recommend him to their other rich friends. By nights, he robs them blind. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Love it. So, I mean, the nature of his work means that he spends time in his clients' houses. He's measuring up, he's installing things. While there, he's wandering around, he's, he's talking to his mm. clients and going, Oh, that's fancy. <laughs> oh, that's quite nice. <laughs> and he's making a big old list of things yeah, he's going to. He, he wants to swipe. nick from yeah. these these properties, and so he's left alone in these houses to do what he wants. It takes no time for him to swipe a set of keys, mm. make a quick impression, do that, or often he's actually employed there to change the locks yeah. of the place. So he lets himself in and out as he wants of all these places he walks away with walks it. away with bundles of stuff is no one at this point going not necessarily putting two and two together that he's doing the robberies but going your security shit yes you changed the lots and people still got in mm. oh for god's sake well what's quite cunning is he actually he generally he leaves several months uh, between so it's not like I've installed a lock the next night next yeah because that into. would be a little bit so like so he, mm, he yeah. does go sort of like four or five months yeah between We've installed everything. It's all sorted. Five months later, they get broken into. Playing the By long that point, game. no one is making the connection yeah. between the locks that they had installed half a year ago mm. and this robbery that's taken place now. No one is making those links together. So he mm. gets away entirely scot-free he has been Lovely. well and truly forgotten by that point these late night robberies become a edinburgh mystery really <laughs> for the next 20 years <laughs> <laughs> and no one has a clue who is responsible by the 1780s william's criminal enterprise has really become a regular part of his life this is it supplements yeah. his income completely his father by now has passed he has everything from him but it is still not enough. Mm, greedy, greedy man. Greedy man. Time for a break. Time for a drink. Time for a drink. 
Nick, we have yes, our drinks. We have drinks. You have a vat of wine. I do. Now I'm sipping away at the cocktail, which is very nice. It's going down I'm very well. Glad. It's a good sip. For me, a sipper. A yes. sipper. <laughs> Lest I throw up. For me, unfortunately, it was a knock it back and oh shit anymore. And then, <laughs> oh God, this is going horribly wrong. More inspiration juice. Mm, inspiration juice. Podcast juice. <laughs> so, William, it's just not enough. It's he's not enough. He's stolen and he's had more money than sense and more money than he's yeah. ever used. But he's but. gambling it away. He's a man who likes the fast-paced life. He wants more. What's about? So he decides to expand his criminal enterprise. Okay. And he partners up with an English locksmith, a chap called George Smith. <laughs> That's a very English name. Very English name. Was that his real name or was he just like, who am well, I? I'm George Smith, George Englishman. Smith is on the run from right. crimes in England. Okay. So he is, yeah, he's been convicted of, yeah, burglary. Yeah. Lock breaking in England, so he's ah. on the run. He's hiding out in Edinburgh, mm. where the English won't find him. Ah, yeah, they'll <laughs> never think to look up there. <laughs> so yeah, so he partners up with William Brodie. Yes. So George Smith is actually a, a, quite a skilled man in his own right, and he is a lot, lot better at copying keys from the impressions that William makes. William, he he makes these copies, but they're a bit rough and ready. George Smith is an artist at this stuff, so yeah, he he nails it. In 1786, he then expands the operation again. He recruits a thief named John Brown. <laughs> They've all got very They've generic all got names. All very, uh, apart from Anthony Ainsley. Oh, nice. Anthony nice. Ainsley, who's a shoemaker, yeah. down in his luck. <laughs> <laughs> a shoemaker times. Yeah. How bad was he at making shoes? I don't know. To be <laughs> down on his luck. Yeah, so, People need shoes. Yeah, but apparently what not, not Anthony's shoes, apparently. <laughs> and because he's, it's quite interesting because he's often employed as the lookout. So he's not got <laughs> right. the sort of the locksmithing or lock picking no. skills or the thievery skills that the others have. Clearly. So he's generally the lookout guy. Yeah. He's probably getting a lesser cut of the yeah. <laughs> of the loot. Well, just all I need you to do is look at maybe he's his one skill is that he can tell from, you know, half a mile away when he hears some footsteps, he knows Brogues, size five. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so, yeah. He knows he's coming he's, by the sound of their shoes. He never, but he was terrible at making he, shoes. He can hear the police coming from, from five you, miles there away. Are boots on the ground, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I like this ragtag yeah. group. Yeah, so, nice. me, yes, I mean, with his crew, he starts doing bigger and bigger jobs. Oh, yes. They move away from housebreaking mm. and s- start focusing on businesses. Yeah, nice. Now, these are probably more difficult to break into. They have more security. But if they can get in, they offer much more reward. Yeah. Really, there's a lot more there. At the time, it was the habit of Edinburgh shopkeepers to hang the keys of their premises on a nail at the back of their shop. Uh-huh. So the records show. So, yeah. So they would just, yeah, the, the door key would just be left at the back of the shop on a nail. Everyone knows where it is. Right. When they leave in the evening, get the key, lock up, off you go. Off you go. Brody would visit these businesses. Mm. Now, obviously, he is an upstanding member of society. Ev- the shopkeepers are like delighted. Yes, the councilman Brody, Deacon Brody, <laughs> would would come and patronise their own shop. Yeah. So yeah, they're and more than happy. So yeah, he would go there for a business discussion, just a chat about how's business, how's yeah. things going, mm. stuff like that. When an opportunity presents itself, the, the shopkeepers has left the room for a moment, grabs the key off the wall sticks it into a block of wax yeah. that he's got in his pocket, makes a nice impression, key goes back on the wall. Brody then, I must go, lots of other people to see. <laughs> Laugh to the family. Yeah. <laughs> 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 mwah, Off he goes. Yeah. George Smith takes the impression, makes a perfect replica Lovely. of the key. And then under cover of darkness, the clue will simply let themselves in. Mm. No smashing glass, no. breaking down doors or anything like that to wake the neighbours. Simply a quiet click of the lock and they're in. Mm. No one suspects Deacon Brody for a not. second. He is above suspicion. Mm. On several occasions, he is actually seen breaking in and a witness identifies William Brody as the culprit. Yeah, The police... Yes, they dutifully investigate. A very embarrassed police officer arrives oh, at the house, yeah. Brody's house, the next I'm door. Sorry. I'm so sorry, sir. I'm so sorry, but someone, some crazy drunken person, <laughs> <laughs> all this in a very broad Scottish accent, says, "He says, where were you last night?" Brody replies, "I was at home. I was at home, yes, asleep with my family." Mm. 
Nothing going on. Of course, of course, absolutely. Yeah, of questions. course you were. Yeah, no yeah. questions asked, absolutely. The witness is sent away with a clip around the ear. How <laughs> dare you uh, defame the name of such a respected councilman? Mm. How dare you indeed? He could not possibly be involved in such things. You must be drunk. Yes. And just seeing nonsense. Seeing who you want to. You've exactly. got a vendetta against off, this good man. Off you go, you crazy, crazy witness. <laughs> Lovely. The gang rob jewellery stores, silk oh. merchants, tobacco merchants, anything they can get their hands on. And they generally, they transport their goods into England. Mm. So they take their goods from, from Edinburgh into England, where they're sold. Very good. Making nice. a huge pile of cash. I don't know cash. why I'm praising these people. Yes, very good. That's exactly what I would do. Yeah. Yes. I don't fucking know. Over the years... It is estimated that hundreds of thousands of pounds Oof. worth of goods are stolen and ferried out of Edinburgh yeah. by William Brodie and his gang. After many, many years of success, so he's been going at this for, say, 20 odd years or so, all in all. Yeah. He decides that it's time, it's time for the big one. <gasps> it's, it's time, we do this one, we can retire. We do this one we last job. We do this one last job <laughs> and we, we, we can retire. We, we're set for life okay. if we do well, this one. What are one. they going to... No, they're not. They're going to rob the Edinburgh tax office. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's taxes. That's <laughs> taxes. That's taxes. Ooh. They're going to rob all the taxes. Okay. Fair enough. I thought it was going to be the castle. No. No, no, they didn't want the castle. Really, is there? No, yeah, 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 just guns. So, um, I, mean, I mean, at the right time, the Edinburgh tax office holds all the tax income for Scotland. Nice. <laughs> I mean, this is a huge amount of money. Yeah, yeah. Tens, if not hundreds of thousands of pounds sort of sat in a cellar in the tax office. Yes. They're nice. thinking, well, it should be in the bank, but it's a lot of money. Exactly. We'll it's, put it in next And week. obviously it's all cash. Yeah. So it's like, that's a lot of effort to transport it to a bank. Mm. It'll be fine. A lot of it's transported down to London. It'll be going out to pay for things, what have you. So and also the tax office long. is dodgy. Yeah, back then. So, <laughs> yeah, they're like, and we like nice things. Yeah, exactly. So, we won't pay for our pheasant. So yeah, there are huge piles of virtually untraceable cash nice. sitting in this Edinburgh office. Mm. Right. That's what we're going for. Do it. We get that, we're set, we're good. Mm. Brody, using all his contacts, manages to obtain an impression of the key for the building. <laughs> so he rocks up one day, city councilman, yes. he's there, absolutely, I'm here for an inspection, I want to see what's going on, I want to see your taxes, all this. <laughs> he manages to get in, he's got an impression of the key, Gives it over to George Smith. George Smith makes a lovely copy. Mm-hmm. All is well. They can get in through the front door. They think with the skills they've got, they can make their way through any internal doors. Then there may be locked, any safes or anything like that. They've got the skills between them to make short work of any sort of locks or, or anything there. So they'll be absolutely fine. On the night of the 30th of October, 1787, mm-hmm. the gang used the copied keys to enter the building. Mm-hmm. They have timed their arrival for just after the last employee has left, but just before the night watchman arrives. Right. So nice. a very small window yeah, of opportunity window. where the place is abandoned. Yeah, There's think no one around. They might look at the schedule there a little bit. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who needed to get home for their tea that quickly. So, yeah. so they, they've got the place to themselves. They make their way to the inner cashier's office, mm. which is where the, the money would have been kept. But the security is tighter than they had imagined. Mm. Things have been upgraded since William Brody was last there. Mm. And they cannot break the lock oh. leading into the cashier's office. Oh. Yes, they could probably have smashed the door down. Not very subtle. They're trying to pick and, and gently get their way in. Rather than risk discovery, they abandon the plan. Okay. Right. Yeah, we, can't, we can't yeah. get in. We're not going to make a big deal of this where we leave they're going to return a different night a bit more scoping of the place but on the way out they discover that the key they had used to let themselves in it won't lock the door as well for some reason there's something something awry with the key Uh. that it opens it but it won't lock it so they're forced to leave the main door of the tax office open right and unlocked now, of course, as soon as the night watchman arrives, mm. this is in- alarm is instantly raised. The yes, door, the, yeah, the door the is open. open. Yeah, yeah. The door is unlocked. Why is the door unlocked? Yeah. So yeah, so alarms are raised. People are alerted. Although it says there's nothing obvious missing, nothing awry in the building. Yes. Still, this unlocked door is a cause of concern. They, hey, they, it's suspicious. They speak to the clerk, who's the last one to leave, and he says, mm. "No, 
one hundred percent. I locked that door yeah. before I left. Look, here's my key. Yeah. I locked that door before I left, like Please I have done a thousand me. other times. Yeah, yeah. Someone else must have let themselves mm. in. Security is massively increased, yeah. and a twenty-four hour watch set over the building. Nice. It takes four months for things to calm down. On the fifth of March. <laughs> 1788 they return to the tax office this time they're not taking any chances they are armed with pistols Mm -hmm. in case anyone gets in their way crowbars anything that they think they're going to need to make this work yeah they're not worried now about not leaving any evidence or even any marks on doors Mm. they have to smash their way in they're going to smash their way in and get the money and go open they get into the building and they break the door into the cashier's office this is going to be the big one 16 pounds. <gasps> no. 16 oh. pounds in the office. No. And they hear a door open somewhere else in the building and someone walk down the stairs. <laughs> a clerk, James Bonner, had returned after hours to pick up some papers that he had left in his office. And he spots a light in the, in the, the cashier's yeah, office. Yeah. And he spots William Brody in the <laughs> office. And he calls out to him. Oh, hello. Deacon Brody, hello. What, hello. Is, what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> this, is mad. this is mad. I mean, he has no idea why William is here at this time of night. Doesn't he? After hours. So, <laughs> but no, he's... At first. He, no, I mean, he doesn't even cross his mind that he's up to anything untoward. <laughs> um, that guy's an idiot. Yeah, he, no, he's a respectable city uh, councilman. Yeah. Why would he do such things? He, he must be here on... City business, way above my pay grade. Yeah. So, yeah, it must all be above board. George Smith, one of the gang members, is crouching behind the counter with his pistol drawn. And he is ready to shoot this guy who's coming down the stairs. When William Brody, he steps out from the office as if he has every right to be there. Yeah. And he plays the part. He exchanged pleasantries with the clerk, with James. The man goes on his way completely oblivious as to what he has just walked <laughs> into the middle of. <laughs> He's walking on his merry way, just like left the building down the street. Ah, William Brody was in there in that look building after that. It's a bit weird. It's a bit, bit, it? bit weird. Well, none of my business. None, none, exactly, none of my business. Obviously, city none business. Of... He's going to be there. So Also, it's either he's an idiot or he's very smart and he's gone, whatever this is, I do not want to be shot. I must get my glasses checked because yep, I leave, see nothing. Leave me out of this, whatever Bye. is going on. <laughs> Indeed. But. They're in there, 16 pounds. They're in there, 16 pounds. Now, the the gang is rather shaken by this interruption Mm. and decides, we need to get out of here. Well, now we need to get out of here. Before this clerk does turn around and go, that's a bit weird. (laughs) Wait a minute. Um, (laughs) And he tells someone what he's seen. They need need to scarf (laughs) up. They leave with 16 pounds. Not realising that the same desk has a hidden compartment no! that contains over six hundred pounds oh, in, in a secret drawer <laughs> of this desk. Oh, rookie, rookie, mistake. The, rookie mistake. Look for the secret compartment. Look for the secret drawer. Absolutely. Mm. The next day, the gang reconvene to divvy up their rather pathetic bounty. Yeah. Really, the gang turn on William Brody. He was the one who had chosen the date. How could he not have known there was? I mean, fuck all money mm. in on site. He was the one who was meant to know when the taxes were coming in, when the cash was going to be there, when was the opportune moment, and he has screwed up royally. Mm. They go their separate ways, but one of the gang, John Brown, has decided that this debacle is the end of the line. It's absolute nonsense. He also knows that there is a reward out of £150 to for anyone offering any information to into a robbery that had been committed a year earlier yeah. that the gang had committed a yeah. year earlier but there was still this reward mm. w- was out on top of that re- the reward comes with the king's pardon oh nice yeah if yeah, he yeah, was yeah. to yeah so if he says yeah it was me and it was these other guys he gets a pardon he gets off scot free he gets 150 quid yeah, to the bargain money, yeah. the other guys go to the gallows more likely <laughs> he decides do it do it i want to be a free man that night he goes to the sheriff's office he turns himself in 
while he's giving his evidence, John Brown, he is smart enough to know that if he points the finger straight at a city councilman, mm. he's probably going to get laughed out of the room. Yeah, exactly. They're probably going to go, what the hell are you talking about? That's utter nonsense. Mm. So he only identifies the other two, George yeah. Smith, the English locksmith, and Anthony Ainsley. Uh, <laughs> humble shoemaker. <laughs> the humble shoemaker, indeed. He has <laughs> them as his co-conspirators. Mm. The men are arrested. Yeah. And they are held in the city prison. Now, as soon as William hears that one of his gang has turned traitor yeah. and the other two have been arrested, I think it's time for me to make a subtle exit. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's time for me to make himself scarce. Quietly, one morning, he leaves Edinburgh yeah. and he makes his way down to London. Yeah. Now, surely London is far enough. London is far enough. Back in back in the day, yes, Edinburgh to London is a hell of a long way. I mean, it it's takes sixty him, years. It takes him eighteen days to get from Edinburgh to London. I mean, sometimes it feels like that when you're driving <laughs> as well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. he's on what in coaches and walking and on yeah. horseback and things. So it takes him an awful long time. Mm. So I think by the time I get to London, no one is going to know who the hell I am. Yeah. It's yeah. all going to be good. But no. No. In that time, his absence has been noted in Edinburgh. <laughs> Too big a coincidence. Yeah, and thought that that's very odd that this yeah. this well-renowned councilman has just vanished, and now we've got three men in jail, all pointing the finger that he is the gang leader. He is the one behind all of this. So the authorities think, right? Okay, we need to track this man down. Mm. He has got some questions to answer. From London, William makes his way down to Dover. Oh, lovely, lovely. Lovely. The white and there he boards a ship. Now, the ship, in theory, is heading back up to Edinburgh, around the coast. Oh, okay. Heading back up, and he, yep, he gets on the ship. But while on board, he makes uh, probably a healthy donation to the captain, and the captain stops off in Amsterdam. Nice. He crosses the channel, stops on the continent, mm -hmm. making... Booze cruise. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. So yeah, so for William to escape. Mm -hmm. While William is on board the boat, he makes the acquaintance of a couple who are all indeed on their way up to Scotland. Thomas Geddes and his wife mm -hmm. are on their way to Scotland. William gives Thomas some letters addressed to one of his mistresses. And Thomas, yes, agrees. As soon as I get to Edinburgh, yes, I will post these letters for you. Absolutely not a problem at all. The ship arrives rather unexpectedly at the port of uh, Vlissilgen. Mm, in okay. Amsterdam, very good, very good. which is known as Flushing, yes, in, yes, in the UK, yeah. So yeah, yeah. I, which I've not come across before. <laughs> but yeah, so in English, known as Flushing, William disembarks, much to the surprise of all the other passengers, going. I didn't know we were coming here. <laughs> <laughs> this is interesting. This is... <laughs> oh, the rolling hills of Edinburgh. Why is everyone why, high? Yes. <laughs> why is there a windmill? <laughs> why is there a windmill going on? Yes. And other lovely, lovely things about <laughs> Amsterdam. <laughs> William vanishes into the city. The ship continues on its way up to Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. As the ship approaches its destination, Thomas Geddes is increasingly perplexed by the letters that he has agreed to post. I mean, who is this odd man who mm. seems to have the power to divert a boat <laughs> across the channel <laughs> and then just disappear into the into the Netherlands? Yes, so what, but can't what's, post his own but letters. But can't post his own letters. Yeah. What's, what's going on? There's, there's, there's something weird. So as soon as he arrives, he takes the letters to the police. He's definitely read the letters as well. Let's all just agree. <laughs> Let's all just kind of go, oh, no, they accidentally fell open. I'm like... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I accidentally steamed them open over a kettle. <laughs> <laughs> His description of the man is curiously similar mm. to that of the missing Deacon Brody. The authorities read the letters and found that he is rather foolishly, very foolishly, given his past sort of mm. carefulness, given his mistress the address he is staying in Amsterdam. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> for, well, for, maybe he cares. Well, exactly. Know, yeah. He's got a family. He's got children. So, yeah, absolutely. So, yes. he, he cares about them. So, he wants to receive a letter back or something. Or so, maybe she's going to bring the goods. Who knows? But, yeah, and this yeah. is this is the address the where, the he, where he is. <laughs> it's all curious enough for the police to start searching William's house. Yeah. And there they find a variety of wax impressions and forged keys right. alongside items which the police know to have been reported stolen. Yeah. All found in William's house. They dispatch police to Amsterdam mm -hmm. to bring him back. Um, he has got some rather serious questions to answer <laughs> now, really. He is found in Amsterdam in the process of arranging 
travel to the United States. Oh really? Oh, he's trying to he's trying like to get passage it, like to the it. United States. If he had managed to sail, he would have been gone forever. Disappeared. He would yeah, have yeah, disappeared, yeah. vanished. Fortunately, they got to him first. He is arrested and returned to Edinburgh. Now, it would be an understatement to say that the trial of William Brodie was a big event <laughs> in <Yeah>. Edinburgh. <laughs> The entire city comes to a standstill, Lit. really. Um, it's the 27th of August, 1788. Mm-hmm. All levels of society. Everyone knows this man. Yeah. They queue and jostle to get a good seat, to get standing room anywhere that they can see this trial. What is going on? Yeah. No one can still quite believe that such a well-known, a respectable man could have lived this double life mm. for 20 years. <laughs> it's absolutely incredible amazing to people that yeah this, it's amazing to me as happened. well actually that everyone's an idiot <laughs> yeah apart from us obviously if we were there we would be the first idiots kind of going Absolutely. there's nothing that he's done wrong <laughs> but, but the evidence is there the items found in his home the witnesses that have previously been laughed away and now they're going ah, I fucking told you yeah, told you <laughs> told you so <laughs> plus John Brown and Anthony Ainsley mm. had they had both turned King's evidence and yeah they were all going against their former boss both William Brodie and George Smith. George Smith stood yeah. with him, the English locksmith. Oh, they were both found guilty of multiple burglaries and thefts and sentenced to hang. <gasps> both men were hanged on the 1st of October in front of a crowd of 40,000 spectators. William arrives at the gallows immaculately dressed. Mm-hmm. He is in his absolute finery. Love it. There. And he bows graciously to those mm-hmm. he knows in the crowd. There's so many there that he recognises. So his old friends are there and he's oh, there. Hello, on hello. The, hello. Thank you for coming. Thank it's, you for coming. It's a delight to see you. Jesus. Well, I mean, you're going to go. <laughs> you're going to go. Absolutely. A rumour persists that William had arranged with his captors that he was to wear an iron collar around his neck. Right, yeah. Um, to protect him from the rope. And it is true that unlike short tradition at the time where the dead man was left to hang, mm. he was whisked away pretty damn sharpish mm. after the gallows dropped. The doctors pronounced to the crowd that William was dead. But the rumours didn't stop. Yeah. The rumours say that he was revived... And many people say that they had, so they saw him in Paris. <laughs> of course. Many, many, many years later, he managed to escape to Paris yeah. and he lived to a ripe old age mm. with all his plunder. A more likely version, though, is that, yes, he died on the gallows. Mm. <laughs> and he is buried alongside his partner in crime, George yeah. Smith, in an unmarked grave oh. that now sits beneath a car park <laughs> in, <laughs> in Edinburgh. Oh. Which is a, a sad end to... It's well, a bit of a shit. It's a bit of a, a, bit of a quite shit. Quite a cavalier. I like quite it. a cavalier, yeah, yeah. man. There's an interesting side note to this this story. Oh, yeah. The tale of this dual life of William Brody fascinated Edinburgh for years and years and years yes. after. How could such a seemingly good man by day turn into this fiend by night? No. Robert Louis Stevenson, no! who was born in 1850, grew up hearing stories about William Brody. His father earned owned pieces of his furniture yeah. that he had made. As a teenager, Stevenson wrote a play about the man yeah. called Deacon Brody or the Double Life. Or oh, the Double Life. Ooh. It was an absolute flop. It yeah, did, it yeah. Did didn't not, do so well. It did not do well, but the idea of a man <laughs> living two <laughs> lives, two lives. <laughs> stuck in his mind. And eventually, in 1884, it was the inspiration behind the classic, The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. <laughs> Oh my god! The tale of Deacon William Brodie. Deacon William Brodie. Oh, that is great. I love that. Robbie Lewis Stevenson was going. You know what? This needs more monsters. More monsters. We need more more potions and people doing it. Doctor Je- Doctor Jekyll. Jekyll's pronounce it. Uh, yeah. Oh, what a great story. It's a good story. I didn't know that was the inspiration. Yeah. No, apparently so. Oh yeah. Double life. Love it. Love yeah. it. And very, very, very famous in Scotland. Yeah. There, there, there are. And there's a street named after. Yeah. There's, there's oh, after his. William Brady's father, I think, mm. with the street there, and there are pubs and taverns that he was meant to have visited yeah. and stayed in and things like that. So, yeah, huge. There are whole trails you can do yes. of like Bro- William Brody trail around yeah. around Edinburgh and things. So, Very wrong places. Yeah. It just goes to show, though, you know, if you've got the confidence and if you've Absolutely. got, enough, yeah, yeah, if you're high, high fluting in society. And then everyone's like, oh, no, he could do no wrong. Obviously, he can't. And then just like, yeah, no, I'll just rob you blind. Yeah. It's fine. But clearly, it seemed like he was the kind of person. 
because of the gambling addiction as well. He was a di- it was the thrill. Oh, completely. The thrill. Absolutely. Less the, the money. I mean, the money helps. Obviously, I mean, he, had, he, had, a, wasn't he had a lot of expenditure. He's got two families, yeah. gambling debts and things. But, but he yeah. wants to do it well. But he wants to do it well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because if he'd been desperate, desperate, then he probably would have robbed them quite quickly, as he's, as I mm. said, and then you, you corrected, is that, you know, he, he got the key and then re- in there immediately to try and fund whatever debts. Yeah. Yeah, try and pay those but off. But no, is it very well planned out and thought out That's and thrill, considered? And yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, wow. What a great story. Well done, Nick. Thank you. You did it. Hooray. On, on a vat of wine. On a bucket of wine and, and a cocktail. Marvellous. What a great tale. Well, what do you think, people? What do you think of the tale of Deacon William Brodie? Did you know this story before? Are you from Scotland? Do you know of it well? Is it still told in taverns <laughs> and in streets of old? And un- Yeah, there's a lot of really good walks in history walks mm. up in Edinburgh did you know it have you got thoughts and theories about why he was able to get away with things I think it's pretty cut and dried <laughs> but also was everyone in there an idiot or were they all just turning a blind eye because this is going to be more trouble than it's worth yeah. to bring down our council and kind of yeah yeah oh, we've elevated this man to the top of society and now don't we look foolish <laughs> mm. Tell us what you think. Jump on the comments of this episode. Wherever you listen to it, tell us your thoughts, your theories, your feelings, your musings. What would you do? What position would you take to have a double life? What would be your day <laughs> job? And then what would you like to have a double life as oh, in the good. evening? I like that. That's good. Maybe that's a Q&A question yeah, for us in the I future. Like have Put some thought into it. Yeah, what do you do by day? What do you do by night? Could can be criminal or it could be anything you like, yes, quite frankly. Indeed. Please let us know. That We'd love to hear your suggestions of that. Maybe we'll build some cocktails around mm. it. But when you are musing all of these things, you must mix up death and taxes. I mean, de- I mean, it's gone down well, but my God, my brain is all over the place. How are you feeling, by the yeah, way? It's, 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 interesting. it's interesting. I also have had a bottle of wine as well at the same time. <laughs> well, you're um, about to finish one. <laughs> yeah, so... You did very well, sir. You did yeah. very, very well. I really enjoyed that. I Good. sipped that very slowly all the way through the episode and it's made me feel a bit better. Marvellous. Actually. It was either going to kill me or it was going to dull some senses, which is what I needed, <laughs> I feel. Could could die in a minute. I haven't tried standing up, but it is delicious. I think most of the ingredients you should be able to Nothing. Access. There's nothing weird in there, absolutely. Yeah, probably have them by now. Yeah, probably got it by now, absolutely. Definitely give it a go, but make sure you sit in now. <laughs> yes. If you're not mixing up a death and taxes, please send us pictures or information about the cocktails you are enjoying over the weekend. Non-alcoholic cocktails are also welcome as well. A few people have been asking, do we do non-alcoholic cocktails? No, is the honest answer. I Sinead does sometimes. And we did one that one dark, dark January. It was a terrible, terrible time. It was a terrible, terrible time. I was grumpy and miserable the whole time. <laughs> but we do understand that not everyone drinks on here. Yes, our cocktails are always going to be alcoholic. But if you've got suggestions of nice alternatives, we'd be happy to share them Quite. too. If you have haven't already please consider joining us on patreon.com follow us on social media predominantly on instagram on youtube and on tiktok where we tell extra stories and we have a lot of fun and please leave us a five-star review wherever you're listening to this podcast really really helps the show leave reviews for any podcast you listen to any books you're listening to anything like that take two seconds and please support creators because it's really important and we very very much appreciate it we do Thanks for listening, guys. We have been the people inside the Poisoner's Cabinet. We will see you next week. And remember, your loved ones are trying to kill you. Oh.